Hello and welcome to my channel, Data3RC. This video is part four in a series of videos dedicated to the build of a TLR5B buggy. In part one, we had an introduction and an unboxing. In part two, we did a cost analysis for all the parts required to build the buggy, and then we compared that to a low C5T 2.0. In part three, we started the build and got through step A3. And now in part four, we're gonna pick up on step A4. Let's get started. It's time to start step A4, and this assembly here is part of your steering mechanism in the car. And within this assembly, there's this piece right here called an Ackerman bar. And this kit comes with two Ackerman bars. You get your choice. And what the Ackerman bars are actually doing is allowing for a particular orientation of the tires to each other as they're rotated about their axes while the car is turning. The long Ackerman bar allows for smoother, more stable cornering. The shorter Ackerman bar allows the car to turn quicker, but it's less stable and more unpredictable than the longer Ackerman bar. Step A4 is complete, nothing real special about it. The only thing I'll say is just be careful not to over tighten this bolt and this bolt. If you do, you'll limit the freedom of movement that you need on those pieces right there. And then also this dimension right here, you got to measure it's on the bottom side of this piece over here. Um, this is to scale, or you can use a caliper, which is what I did. Um, on the bottom side of a caliper, you have this piece right here that sticks out. So you can, as you push that in, the distance between the bottom and here is measured up here on the dial, or I should say on the, on the, uh, the face. And uh, that'll get you your dimension right there, I think, easier than trying to hold it up to that piece of paper. Step A5, we're now going to start adding some parts to the chassis. So we're going to add the servo assembly. We're going to add this brace. And then these parts right here that the steering mechanism pivots on. And these side pods. Step A5 is now complete. The only thing really worth mentioning is just make sure you get the Loctite on the screws for these two posts right here, being that these are metal on metal. All right, it's time for step A6. So we're gonna put this steering assembly onto the chassis on these pivot points. We're gonna mount this top brace and we're also gonna put on these body pin posts. Step A6 is now complete. Uh, really the only thing to mention is just make sure that when you connect up this linkage right here, which is this piece, when you connect this to this, that you do that before you put this upper brace on, this upper brace right here. Because if you put this on first, you don't give yourself very much room to work. So connect this first, the servo linkage, to this arm right here. And then also make sure before you put this down that you put this on, the uh, body pin posts. And then make sure you remember your Loctite for these two screws right here because they're metal screws into a metal post. A7 and A8 look pretty simple. It's just related to putting this gas tank in the car. And A9 looks like nothing more than a completed diagram of all the steps in section A. All right, step A7 and A8 are complete. So now the car looks like diagram A9 in the book, ready to go. And that's the last of the A series. We're ready to move on to the B series instructions. The only thing I've mentioned here is just make sure you don't tighten these down too tight. You want the rubber to do its job in here. Let these grommets take up some energy. If you tighten these down too tight, then uh, they won't do their job and you'll put too much stress on these plastic mounts and you might break them off the gas tank. So just make sure you, you get these snug, just not too tight. Something I had mentioned in the beginning of this video series was I was going to compare the low C5B to the low C5T 2.0. So before we move on to the B series of steps, I wanted to take a minute to go ahead and do that in the A series. So A1 and A2, I didn't see a, a comparison, which is obvious because those are the uh, dual steering linkage setups. But going and moving over here into step A3, we can see that there are some parts that are shared. Obviously those are you know just some screws and washers and whatnot, but those are shared between the two vehicles. And then moving over here in step A4, we can see that in the steering mechanism, we share a few parts there. And then in step A5, we share the posts right here and here. 
that the steering pivots on and then obviously the hardware down here that holds those into the chassis step a6 once again we share several of the steering parts um, the bearings that the steering mechanisms rotate on and then moving to step a7 uh, several of the fuel tank parts are shared not the fuel tank itself I mean it looks identical to me but the part numbers are not the same so I'm not gonna say the gas tanks are the same but the parts that hold them in are and then down here in step a8 just the screws that hold the gas tank mount in and that covers it for the a series so in the B series I'll go ahead and do the same thing as well this is a good place to conclude part four of this video series being that we just completed the A series of steps. So in part five, we'll start with the B series of steps, which starts with the front differential.